They're hard at work in there. Best join them. They'll help you get whoever really killed the Empress. So it's starting at last, Admiral. We found our man. Even after six months in Cold Ridge... We can continue this later, Lord Pendleton. The man of the hour is here. Corvo, I'm Admiral Havelock. A true servant of the Empire, like you. Until the Lord Regent purged those of us who wouldn't recognize his claim on the throne. And I'm Lord Trevor Pendleton. I represent the nobility in our little group. But we all act as equals here at the Hound Pits pub. This is a momentous occasion, Corvo. I'm going to come out with you. We've been building a coalition of loyalists, aimed at ending the Lord Regent's tyranny and restoring the throne. At risk of execution, we're committed to finding young Lady Emily and seeing her crowned as Empress. We've got big plans, but we can't do any of it without you. We need your skills, your ability in a fight. And in helping us, we're going to help you destroy the men who murdered the Empress. Sorry, you must be exhausted. We can discuss this further after you've recovered. But before you retire, you should introduce yourself to Piero. He's challenging at times, but his industrious mind buys him that right. Yes, Piero's as much an artist as a technician. He's going to be crafting the gear you'll need. Go talk to him, and then get some sleep. We can talk more when you've rested. No clues, huh? Piero is an inventor who is available to craft and upgrade equipment. Piero spends most of his time in his workshop. Alright, where is this guy at? Oh, we got collectibles first. Let's get back here. So I need food. Him lock. More food. 30 bucks. Good job. from the series Overseer Invocations by High Overseer Abram Templeton. And I say to you, brothers, it is here that we make our stand as a righteous force against the growing darkness. It is here that we unite against the spirits of the unknown that would drag us screaming into the night, never to return to our homes, to our families. Together we will serve as a rod to those who would stray from the herd for the foggy gray waste of the outsider. We will burn a bright fire with our virtuous actions so that others will not lose their way. And to those who choose to wander beyond the walls of our homes and far places, we will strike at them swiftly before they whisper to their neighbors, filling their hearts with strangeness and doubt. River traffic is forbidden from landing in the songs. distillery. Well, I'm not about to sing. Screw that. No. <laughs> Due to risk of infectious contact, violators will be taken to the flooded district for treatment and rehabilitation. More books. Excerpt from a longer work of fiction. Finding my way by the feeble light of the dying fire, I saw her working. A large needle moved in her hand, following precise esoteric patterns, knotting knots and loops of seamstress craft from ancient days. Beneath her needle, her body clenched and shuddered, shaking the wooden table. A morbid fascination pushed me closer until she turned her blank face toward me, resting the needle in his flesh. With a refined tone, she addressed me, So you are the lover, I presume. You too have been unfaithful, and it is now your turn to be mended. Wow. Young Prince of Tibia. Excerpt from a theater play. Lord Nathan Bale, shaking with outrage. How dare you, sir, clothed so in my very home. I should hand you over to the wash to pray Tyvian. Prince Kalsar moving closer. That's a harsh welcome for royalty, my lord. Your daughter treated me with much with much more hospitality. Alas, she has gone out for the evening and leaving me all alone. Lord Nathan Bale stammering, studying the younger man before him. What are you doing? Leave this house. Go back to your frozen wasteland, pale rascal. Pale, yeah, pale rascal. 
Prince Kalasaurus, my Koile reached out. No need for anger between us, Lord Bale. Is it so wrong of me to be here? As I've proven, I've developed an affinity for you and your family. Lord Nathan Bale gasping. Oh, my Kalasaurus, your skin is so warm it burns. What the crap? <laughs> Man, there's a lot of books. Excerpt from the Traveler Journal of the Whaler of the Final Years, a Gaffer's Tale, Volume 2, or in a Gaffer's Final Passage. After more than a quarter of a century, I am done with whaling, too broken to continue. I've seen all the corners of the Isles, and made more coin than most men see in a lifetime, but it's all gone. I've lived through an emperor and watched his daughter take the throne. Very young emperor she was, but slain so young. Everything beautiful comes to die. I've eaten in every port of the known world and sailed to the loneliest waters you can imagine. I've seen the cliffs around Panda Pandicia. Even the best of it doesn't give me an ounce of joy. The years come back across my dreams as a line of butchered bodies, long, sleek, and singing among the waves under the moonlight, only to be speared by ugly, weather-scarred men who knife each other for a good pair of boots. Each year I have less time to come home. My tongue forgot the language of small chatter, and those who lived in the cities th thought me odd. My sister Nina hardly knew what to say to me during our visits. When she lost her business to the Lord Regent's crooked ba barrister, I was a hundred miles east of Mor Morley. Gaff hand frozen from the sleet ish. We tracked the first bull whale we've seen in months. I helped her as much as I could, but Nina died in the early days of the plague. None of it mattered. If I jaded and bitter, it's because this industry has taken away my dreams. The world has beaten me. This is a depressing world. Oh, hey, who are you? My, you must be Corvo. I am Lydia, at your service. Your room is upstairs and ready. When they told me who it was, well, I thought you'd be older, like the Admiral. Hmm. So I'm guessing this is the Admiral's room with all these medals everywhere. Is that the same one? Yep, yeah, that's the same book we just read. Log entry 1-4. Seems we've moved to a new phase. Martin's improvisations have borne fruit. The former bodyguard has been freed and is en route to the staging location. With Pendleton's voting block and my military connections, all we've lacked is the ability to project lethal force in a controlled manner against a previously inaccessible Ah, to the point, we need a man who can kill the bastards for us. Corvo is more than capable of that, I have no doubt. End ball. Is this off? Switch. Switch, where the hell is the... Alright, hey, hey Vlock, entry one. It has been days since our men were dispatched to stash weapons for Corvo and the old sewer. They have not returned, so I can only hope that they succeeded in getting the packages delivered. Pierre will spend considerable time and resources making these things. If I could find a way to mass produce them, the Dumbwall Navy would secure its place as the dominant force on the globe. But back to Corvo. Can he actually break out of Coldridge? And if so, will he make his way here? I personally give him odds of 1 to 5. Admiralty and the fleet. Excerpt from a book on naval history. While each of the Isles has come from has some form of naval fleet, none is more envied than that of Crystal, with his long, proud history of great ships and admirals who command them. Boys come of age in the cities of Crystal, hoping to someday captain such a ship, and family dynasties are made by those captains who track down infamous pirates or Carcidious uprisings. Seditious. As during the Morley insurrection. In times of war and peace, Crystal continues to innovate at sea. The ship designs of Anton Sakhalov himself now represent the highest standard in the whaling trade, allowing crews to haul up, haul their kill up over the deck and begin their butchery and processing even as the ship returns to Dunwall. Crews can be seen working on their latest whale as the ship moves slowly up the Renhaven River, coming to dock with one of the powerful warehouse companies such as the Grievous Whaling House. Suspended in the rigging overhead and backlit by the setting sun, the silhouette of one of these creatures makes a moving sight as it cruises to its final resting place in the industrial heart of the capital city. A new note has been added. Here's volume one to that other one we read earlier. Excerpt from Travel Tale, Greffers Tale, volume one, or Greffers of the Amateurs. My sister Nina and I left Tivia together, saying goodbye to our aunt, the woman who had raised us since childhood, leaving behind our home city of Yarrow and the cold but beautiful white landscapes we had always known. We boarded a ship for Dunwall, our parents had left us with a sizable inheritance, and we spent half of it getting to this capital city and establishing a small import shop dedicated to Tivian furs. 
Once I felt needing to establish the business, I was free to pursue my dreams. Signing on with a whaling ship was the most exciting thing I've ever done, and I saw it as a means to an end. Someday I would become my own. I would captain my own crew and eventually own a pair of fleet of similar vessels. With tears in her eyes, Nina kissed me farewell, and I did not see her again for many months. As an apprentice to the gaffer, I got to see the dragging and killing of a great beast up close. Nothing had ever fired my spirit so as the wind and bounding waves raced after a wounded whale being pulled by the skein of cables embedded in its thick flesh. I changed more in this first seven months than I had in the previous seven years. Whaling was beginning to make its mark on me so that Nina barely recognized me when I returned, tanned and sinewy, sinewy with muscle where the crease already wrinkled the corners of my eyes, but she could see that I was filled with joy, having found my purpose. Hmm. A lot of whaling going on. Oh, who are you? Oh, it's you again. Pleased to meet you, Master Corvo. I saw you at court in happier days. But you might not remember. I was once a close ally to the Lord Regent, Hiram Burroughs, back when he was just the spy master. He's one manipulative bastard, I can tell you that. Let's see. Food. Crystal. My furnishings have been installed at last with no small amount of complaining by that antiquated boatman. The others have no idea what it's like to suffer as I have. Speaking of which, Wallace, please breathe two bottles of Dunwall Red, never mind which, and fetch a clean glass. <sighs> well, I'll begin again tomorrow. There's something distinguished about you, Corvo. Was there nobility back in your family line? I wouldn't be surprised. Hmm. That's the guy we need to go see. He's out there. I'm going in a different direction. But my room's upstairs, so we need to make our way up there. 